Hey everybody, welcome back to the Stash Report from the Stash Project. This is going to be our June 2020 compilation video. For folks that are new to the channel or you happen to find this by stumbling across a YouTube algorithm, welcome. Uh, we do this type of video at the beginning of every month to let you know what the expected automotive kit releases are for the given month, and that, of course, again, June 2020. So we have uh, quite a plethora of things on the domestic side of things, mostly from round two, as they try to unclog their pipes, as it were, from the uh, various delays related to coronavirus. So they've got, uh, I think it's uh, eight or nine kits on this list. Uh, there is a Revell kit this month. It is a reissue of a kit that is always very much in demand when it comes out. Uh, you have the Tamiya kits, which technically speaking we already have here in the United States or will have in the next couple of days. And then uh, you get some Hasegawa stuff and some Aoshima stuff this month. The Hasegawa stuff is the beginning of the Shizuka Hobby Show uh, new tools, modified reissues, uh, so that is also, uh, I guess, fun if you're looking forward to those things. So, starting here on the domestic side of things, the one Revell kit that we are for sure getting this month, matter of fact, I already see it is in stock as I'm recording this on the 1st of June, is the Cadillac Lowrider. Now, that is the Coupe de Ville from the, that has that weird sort of half 80s, half 90s vibe thing going on with it. It's based on an old diecast. Well, old diecast. It's based on a diecast uh, from the 90s, which at this point is, I guess, kind of old. It is 20 years ago. <clears throat> this box art on this is identical to the last box art, so the only way you can really tell which version of this you got, the one from like four years ago or the one that just came out, is the fact that this kit on the side and the copyright information will say Revell GBMH, which is Revell Germany, 20, you know, copyright 2020, blah, blah, blah. So the box art, when you see it, probably uh, will be in next week's show when we talk about it. Um, you know, the box art is going to look identical to the last ugh, last revision of this kit. Made sense. I just, you know, reprinted the boxes, basically. Uh, so I know that, like I said, that kit's always well in demand. Hopefully the Revell, uh, the new Revell realizes that and they, they run off more than like 1,500, 2,000 of them like they seem to because they always seem to disappear within like a month or, or so of them coming out and then they're never kept as a catalog item for some reason. It's always a, like a one run of fun, as it were, limited reissue. And then the prices go, you know, back up to $80, $90 on eBay. So, uh, you know, preface that with, if you want one, go get one. Um, I, I don't normally do the install the panic and oh my godding thing around model kits, but, you know, the history of this kit is. If you don't buy it when it's out, you're not going to be able to find it. So, uh, you know, if you get if you want one, go find it. I do see that there is a resin caster who, now this kit is being reissued again, is talking about doing a stock... Uh, body for it, because even the body sides of it are a little janky uh, in the sense that it's a custom Cadillac, so it doesn't have stock trim on it. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with that, uh, if that project ever gets done, because I think it was supposed to be you know done for the reissue four years ago, and then the reissue sold out. There were no more, and the guy just sort of put it on the back burner. So at any rate, moving over to round two, uh, there are, again, I said a number of kits here. So we're going to start with the five-car Holloway trailer. Uh, that is a 1960s, 1970s era car hauler. Uh, it's a single axle, which is something that only existed back then. Cars were light enough <laughs> that they had a single axle on the trailer. You know, these days, everything obviously has two axles on the back of a trailer, except for like 32-foot pups. Uh, maybe some 35-foot uh, single-use trailers. Um, are, we live relatively close to a... Uh, CVS distribution center around here, and every now and then I see their like intercity trailers they use to deliver into the pharmacies that are in downtown areas, and they are a like 35 foot trailer with a, with an act with a single axle, kind of a weird trailer, uh, for purpose built for those specific deliveries where they don't have a lot of space. But uh, it is, um, I'm trying to think of what. I don't think it has a brand. Like it does, it's not branded. It's going to have the same box art that it came when it was reissued back in the 2000s, which was in a vintage box back then, which is kind of an odd thing. Uh, you know, Round Two, or Round Two didn't own the company back then. That was actually a um, Racing Champions era uh, kit, and so they did do a few things with vintage box art. Um, it, it should fit behind most AMT and MPC tractors in terms of, you know, making a combination out of it. Um, it's going to hold 
mid-sized cars probably tops you're not gonna put a lot of full-size cars on it. it's supposed to hold five cars it's not that big of a trailer if you start putting like coupe de Vils and things on it so anyway that's back out or will be back out i guess i should say uh the other kit that i think or the other kit the one kit i think this month that people are really looking forward to is the 1967 chevy impala four-door from the tv show supernatural now there are some caveats to this kit in the sense that it is very true to the the primary hero car on the TV show. Hero car, if you're not familiar with the term, is the car that's on camera, not driven, sort of just shown. It's you know, the car is part of the show, and there's a hero car. Generally, same thing. There were two or three hero cars, and the rest of them were you know driven around and, and blown up and rolled over and everything else that happened to those poor chargers. Uh, so this was built after the primary one. So it does have custom wheels. It does have... Um, a custom front seat. It looks like it's something that's uh, maybe out of a, a 60s era Caprice. So know that going in, the front seat is not a factory stock 67 Impala bench seat by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a bench. Uh, there are a bunch of new parts in this. Obviously, the new body. Uh, I saw some people when this was announced early say, well, they're just going to carve a four, th you know, two back doors into the 67 Impala tooling. They did not do that. It is a brand new tool body that is a real four-door body. They also retooled the bumpers, retooled the hood uh, to make it a flat hood, a non-SS grill, uh, non-SS tail panel. The back bumper does not have the bumper guards molded on, but the front bumper does. This kit is molded in black, so know that going in if you're a fan of that, which most American car builders tend not to be. Um, and then again, it has newly retool or new tooled interior pieces, four door side panels for the platform interior, a column shifter, the bench seat, uh, the spotlights, a bunch of like so this stuff really makes a car that is true to a specific car that was on the TV show. It is not exactly what you would consider to be a factory stock 67 Impala kit that they kind of sort of made look like the movie car. This was made to look just like the movie car, and if you want to make it into anything else, you're going to have to fiddle around and and you know do your own kit bashing and whatnot. Um, one other thing I want to talk about this kit is that, remember, I just said knew this, knew that, knew the other thing. This kit, and I saw a guy who runs a fairly large online presence, or, uh, not so much for modeling, but for an accessories line, and does run a very large hobby shop in Ohio at the Buckeye Scout Classic, walking around and telling at least three different people very loudly that AMT was destroying a perfectly good kit to make this stupid supernatural that nobody wants. They did not destroy the 67 Impala SS kit. The coupe. They did not. It is parts added to that kit. That 67 Impala from the 1990s, from the Muller era of AMT, is the basis of this kit, right? The chassis, the running gear, it's still, this kit still has the 427 engine. Um, you know, it's all of that stuff, the, the basis, the bones, the architecture, if you will, of this kit is that 1990s era AMT 67 Impala new tool kit back then. They have added a bunch of parts to this kit. They did not destroy a perfectly good kit because nobody has destroyed a perfectly good kit since like the 1980s. Uh, yes, it is true. A lot of the kits that you want from your childhood, if you happen to be like 55 or older and watching this, do not exist anymore because those were annual kits and they were changed every single year. That's why, you know, certain 60s kits are so expensive because they were run that one year and then they were modified into the next year. It is also the reason why those kits that you want can't necessarily be reissued because once an annual tooling gets so far, and the example of that is always the 70 Impala Heavy Chevy kit, a lot of people want a 68, 69 and a 68 Impala. Well, the tooling is a 70 Impala. And yes, there are issues with the 70 Impala in the sense that it replicates something that didn't exist in real life because there was no 70 Impala SS. That trim level just didn't exist in 1970 <clears throat> when the real car came out. It was supposed to, then they decided not to do it, and then you have this weird kit that AMT made ahead of the real car, and you know that, that whole thing. They, you know, the, the tooling is parked in, where it's parked. Sorry, that's what it is. And then the other examples of that would be another kit we'll talk about here in a second, where tooling got so far, and then they destroyed it by making it into a modified stalker, or a gasser, or a dragster, or some wild custom thing that doesn't appropriate uh, any part of real life into its design. And that's where the model kit is now stuck at 
Could those things be retooled back to original? We've seen a few uh, AMTs take a few swings at that. Uh, the uh, 76 Gremlin with it had a, you know, its new its nose piece retooled so it go back to factory stock and things like that. But that is not as easy as it seems. One of the biggest delays right now with that kit, some of you have, or may have heard of, we really haven't discussed it too much on the channel because it's so far out in the future, the 70 Camaro full bumper, right? The 70 Camaro kit was, you know, run through the, ba the back end of the 1970s, and then AMT backdated it back to 70. And that combination of newly tooled backdated parts and the, the fact that the kit had run, like I said, through the 70s made a completely and totally awful 1970 Camaro. It was, it was atrocious. That is why they made a brand new tool 70 and a half Camaro, which, of course, spawned a Baldwin Motion version and all of that. They are trying to put a front bumper, full front bumper, instead of the split bumpers that a 70 and a half Camaro has, onto that kit. And what they have found in doing that is it's not just as simple as just sprinkling a little pixie dust on the front core tooling and having it come back out the other side in one piece. They found, as they designed this up, that they've had to go back at least twice to do some significant retooling in that new front core piece because the new tool in the 1990s Camaro, as it turns out, is not asymmetrical side to side. Whoever designed that tool did not actually make sure that both the front fenders are the same height, the same width, and the same shape. So when they just scanned the front fascia of a 70 Camaro, and well, we'll just stick this on the kit and then we'll modify it to fit, it turned out that that didn't work that way because the front fenders aren't equilateral side to side and that is the problem that you run into when you just say oh well they just they're just being lazy they're just trying to screw us out of model kits they're they're trying to you know corporate profits like round two is some you know bank of america where they're too big to fail or something like that it's no that is significantly harder than you think it is it's also very expensive but it's significantly harder than you think it is to go back and put new just new stuff into old tools doing it to a 90s era kit like the uh impala even that it's probably not the easiest thing in the world. This this supernatural has been in, you know it's something that's been talked about now for close to two years to get this kit to fruition. So it would be great if we could just snap our fingers and make things different. But the reality is what the reality is. Uh, I've often talked to my friends about creating a video called "The Hobby Business Why It's Your Business" in the sense of just people need to get the education of what happens with their models. I understand that this is a relaxing hobby to people and they don't want them to think about balance sheets and, and costs and expenses and things like that. But if you you kind of have to understand what goes into what in order to re understand the decisions that are made about the hobby that you're in. It's not a matter of like, oh, well, these golf clubs are just better than the last set of golf clubs, so we made new golf clubs. It's more way more complicated than that when you start dealing with all of this old steel that's been in existence for 60 years and you want to suddenly do things to change it. It's just mm, sometimes not that quite that easy. So talking about old annual kits, they're going to reissue the 88 Ford Mustang GT. Now this is originally the 87 Ford Mustang GT for MPC. It is the culmination of their Fox body annuals that were released. Uh, 1989, of course, AMT and MPC merged with Ertl into one company. And this kit magically gained a year and became an 88. And it's been reissued at least twice since the merger, once in 2000 in the Millennia series, and then again in 2004 in a checker box, a uh, Walmart box. So there's nothing new about this kit. Uh, it's the same kit. I've seen the complaints already that this thing doesn't have, like, they didn't retool clear headlights. I'm like, okay, the way the kit is designed, the, the headlights just sort of, the chromed headlights just sit on a plastic ridge behind the bumper so they fit flush. In order to replace those with with plastic pieces, you'd have to tool up new headlights, which really isn't that big of a deal. You would then have to tool up some way to have them installed so it's not just clear pieces of plastic over clear plate uh, over a flat piece of plastic, right? You'd need new interior headlight buckets. That in itself may not really be that big of a deal, but then again, the kit's not designed to have them, so you're talking about, again, retooling the whole front core of the model, and possibly the side cores of the model, too, because I'm not sure where, I haven't seen one of these 88 Mustangs since I built one back in, like, 1987 as a kid, to know whether or not the where the tooling all splits, you know, the mold lines you have on a tool, that's where the tool comes together. 
you know, it's where that tooling splits up so that it, you might have to retool the front fenders <laughs> to get those headlight buckets to fit, depending on where the where the front and the sides meet and how they come together. It's, again, not that easy just to be like, oh, well, I don't think they're just being lazy. And I don't want these chrome headlights. You know, nobody wants chrome headlights, obviously, but it's what it is. I mean, they're not going to spend $40,000 retooling a, you know, 20 for 30 two-year-old annual kit. It's just, it's just not going to happen. I mean, you've seen plenty of 1960s kits they haven't bothered to do anything to. Why would this 32-year-old Mustang get something done to it? You know, it's no, there's no logical to that. No logic to that. Uh, another reissue and a theme of what we've just discussed is a 65 Ford Fairlane modified stalker. So here's an old annual kit. I happen to look to see if this kit was out or, you know, yet because I heard some talk about it. Uh, coming soon, as it were, and while it's not out yet, there is an original 65 Ford Fairlane annual kit on eBay right now for $325, because, again, that kit only was issued one time, and then it was destroyed into this stupid modified stalker. It might have been cool at the time when kits were 50 cents a piece, and you were just like, hey, here's another use for it, kids will love it, it's a race car. Now you don't have to get to have a 654 Fairline though. Um, yeah, yeah. So that is that's again they did not destroy the 67 Impala because that practice of destroying perfectly good kits doesn't exist anymore. So that kit's just a reissue. Uh, it came out I think with the Stevens International uh, back in the 2000s. Same thing, new box art, um, new decals. They're going to reissue the 1964 Ranchero with a Coca-Cola tie-in. It's going to, of course, have Coca-Cola decals. And the one interesting thing in it is going to have a Coca-Cola chest cooler. Um, very appropriate for 1960s era gas station diorama. Um, I almost want to buy one just for that chest. It's also going to have a couple of those green, clear plastic flats of Coke bottles they've been putting in things lately. Uh, otherwise, the 60 Ranchero kit is the same kit it's always been. I don't really particularly want one because it's it's still got to, you know, have a, it still has a V8 in it. It's based off the 61 Ranchero. They backdated it to 1960 when they did that Ohio George uh, Ranchero gasser kit. So, it, you know, it has all of those parts, basically, just with a Coke chest tied in, to, thrown into it. And I'm not sure I want to pay 20 bucks for a plastic Coke chest. So, uh, be aware if that's coming back. Uh, reissuing the 63 Ford Galaxy. Uh, that is a kit that's been, you know, done a number of times. Uh, Millennium Series, Prestige Series. It was released in the mid-2000s in a weird 1960s retro box where it's all narrow and square. Uh, this is not going to carry that original 63 box art. It's going to carry a, a new box art, but otherwise the kit contents are identical. Uh, the reissue of the 74 Galaxy police car. Um, this always eee, my police car senses because no one would have ordered a Galaxy trim level on a police car. That would have been way, way too expensive. Uh, a police car would have been a Ford Custom or a Ford Custom 500 maybe on the outside, but Galaxy, no. Um you know, it's a trim level. Are there ways to, to detrim it? Yes. There's plenty of how-to tutorials on forums and, and everywhere else on how to backdate it back into a Galaxy, into a custom. But, uh, you know, it's just a straight reissue. Why are they reissuing that police car? Well, now, round two has a James Bond license. So this is a 007 tie-in kit. Uh, I believe this is... Um, I'm trying to think of, I think it's You Only Live Twice. Is the movie? At least that's the poster that's on the side of the box. Uh, there will be another automotive 007 kit coming, as well as a sci-fi 007 kit coming later this year. So they will be using this license a couple of times. How appropriately remains to be seen, but uh, know that that is something else that's out there. Uh, they're going to reissue the C6 Nova. So this will be the, the factory stock street custom kit, the two-in-one uh, that was done back in 86, 87, 88, somewhere in there. I can't remember what the exact years off the top of my head, but I know it's the, the mid to late 80s. Uh, this is sort of an origination kit within the hobby because this is one of the first kits that ever had a platform style uh, interior put into it. So platform style interior is the thing where the door panels are separate and you build it off a platform of the interior. It was one of the first kits that, that in existence to have this, one of the at least mainline uh, hobby kits. Uh, this, of course, pretty much, uh, you know, begat the kind of models that we have today with the uh, side panels being separate and things like that. You still see Japanese manufacturers every now and then kick out a new tool kit that has a tub style interior um, and usually it's you know panned and bemoaned very quickly because we're used to 
30 years of building interiors a certain way and you really just aren't going to get the same level of detail with a tub interior where the side panels are attached to the to uh, a whole uh, you know interior cup basically because the side panels will never be as engraved as engraving the side panels as separate pieces even if you tack on pieces to the side pieces um you know it's still not going to quite be there. I think the only sort of caveat you've seen to that was the G bodies that Monogram did, where the it was a tub interior, but then they had separate little tooled inserts that slid into the doors to replicate the door panels, which was sort of a, a half measure, you know, between those two things. So, at any rate, that's going to come back out. New box art, new decals, and then the last kit. I'll save this for last because this is going to blow a few people's minds because they have been requesting this kit, but not in the way it's coming back forever and ever and ever, and that is a reissue of the 1988 Chevy Silverado monster truck with a Coca-Cola livery. Yay! Coca-Cola things. So, yes, it is a Coca-Cola livery tie-in. Yes, it is the monster truck, not just like, oh, some new 4x4. No, it's the old monster truck chassis with the 88 Silverado on it. Now, the CK1500 series, which started at MPC and then transferred into AMT, is... I don't know how requested it is beyond what I see. Like, I don't know that ne people are necessarily beating down Round 2's door as a matter of course. But I do know that every single time they release the, hey, here's what's new this month video, there's two or three people in there that demand to know why they haven't gotten a CK pickup reissue of the 454 SS or, or the long bed or any of them. Why have none of these kits been reissued? Um, now... A rumor that exists about this is the fact that when they tooled up the monster truck version of the Silverado, they destroyed the chassis to the Silverado, and that's why you can't have a Silverado again. That is simply false, because the monster truck version of the Silverado and the actual Silverado existed at the same time, meaning both kits were in production at the same time by AMT back in the day, and obviously that means you can't have destroyed this in order to make that. It just the logic dictates, right? Uh, people have, have recently compared this because this you know, reissue was talked about on the forums and got out kits and proved that, in fact, that the chassis are different between the two. Uh, it probably does use the, the, the regular 88 Silverado's body and bed and hood. Well, the hood has a... Yeah, the hood, because that kit always had a blower option anyway in the, in the street custom version of it. And then might use the interior piece, right? It does it use pieces from the 88? Yeah, it's an, it's, that's, that's how you amortize tooling, is by creating other versions of the same thing. But it does not destroy the factory stock versions of it. People are going to lose their ever-loving mind, at least two or three people are going to lose their ever-loving mind, because this is so close, but yet so far away from what, they, what they've been demanding for at least the last two and a half years now. Um, maybe the street, car ver the street version will come at some point in time. A lot of things you got to remember is that's an annual kit. So it's been modified, right? The short bed version of that, I think, is kind of permanently modified halfway between a 454SS and halfway between a flare side bed. It's kind of a weird thing. It all depends on where that tooling actually existed because at the time, annual kits weren't saved, right? They just went to the end of the annual run and then they stopped. So whatever amalgamation the tooling is in at this point remains to be seen. I'm assuming that the 88-ish grill still exists. Obviously, it's, they're calling this an 88 compared to the the newer style CK grills that had the, the single headlight, composite headlight compared to the 88s, which had twin beams. So, e e but, I mean, that's what you're getting. So going overseas to Japan, Tamiya get the Japanese release of the new tool Mustang GT4, as well as the Japanese release of the 112 scale Porsche 934 with its Valiant livery. That's the same. 934 just came out as a Jägermeister, now it's got the Valiant livery. New livery, that livery has never been in the large scale 934 before. Uh, from what I understand, my hobby shop got those in today, so they are out here in the United States. Your mileage may vary depending on whether or not your hobby shop or vendor of choice has them in today or this week, but uh, they will be released in Japan as well uh, if you want to you know, order them overseas and then try to get them back here uh, via whatever shipping methods are even available at this point. Over at Aoshima, a bunch of just straight reissue stuff. There, I don't think there's anything really even vaguely new about what's on here. So 2016 Toyota 86 GT, 2012 Subaru BRZ STI, which was known as the STI concept when it came out in 2013. Um, they sort of lost the concept part of it. The STI, there was never an STI version of the BRZ. It's just sort of a what-if kit. Um, the 2016 should have an engine in it. The, the, the BRZ STI concept does not have an engine in it. 
Uh, Reacher the 91 Nissan Silvia S13 Rasty, you know, the venerable kid if there ever was one at this point. Uh, 98 Toyota Chaser Tour 5 Vortex Ridge, 1968 Austin FX4 Taxi. That's that old I make kit that's sort of 121st and a half scale. It's not quite 124th by any stretch of the imagination. Um, not the worst kit I may ever made, but it's certainly not in scale. Uh, reissue of the 1984 Toyota Truno AE86 GT Apex, and reissue of the 85 Toyota Levin AE86, or AE, actually that's an AE85, 1500 SR. 8685, that last number designating how many cylinders, or how many liters the engine was. So the 86 is a 1.6, the 85 is a 1.5. Uh, the A, the GT Apex should have the engine insert in it. I know for a fact that the 11 1500 SR does not, because they would have to do things to the engine to replicate the smaller engine, and they obviously are not going to do that. Uh, reissue of the Lamborghini Countach 4000 Quattrovol, and that is going to be in the new supercar line, so that's technically your new kit for this month. And then a couple of just straight restocks that were added at the, you know, at the end of the list, which is the Nissan Fairlady Z Aero Custom, which is another venerable AO Shima kit, uh, 77 Celica 2000 GT, and the 1990 Toyota Estima, which you may recall came out last fall and had all the retool parts to turn it into a factory stock Estima because it was always a custom version when they tooled it up in the mid-1990s. Over at Hasegawa, again, you're going to start seeing some of the uh, new Shizuka releases coming this month. First up, you have the re straight reissue of the Toyota Celica GT4 RC. That is the street version of their Rally uh, GT4 Celica. Uh, reissue of the Lamborghini Miria P400 SV with a resin girl. That's already been out, so that's a straight reissue. And then we go into the Shizuka stuff. So you get a reissue of the Mazda Cosmo, and this is going to have an Evangelion 2.0 tie-in. It's the Nerve response vehicle with uh, Asuka, uh, Shidekinawa Asuka, in a resin girl. So resin girl, all the things. Uh, reissue of the Porsche 944 Turbo race car with a shell livery, new livery, same kit. Uh, reissue of the Calsonic Nissan R92 CP, the number one car. Uh, this was probably the car I think a lot of us expected them to do when they released the R9192 kits originally. This is the championship car for the 1992 season. Uh, the original R92 CP uh, Japanese sports car, car, sports car prototype car that they did was won one of the races in 1992, but finished like fourth or fifth in the points. Then they released the 92 version that ran at the 24 hours of Daytona, and now they're releasing this one. Now, there are a few new pieces and parts to this because the cars are a little bit different as far as the aero package that they ran between the two teams. Uh, so that is there. Of course, there's a new set of decals with it. Uh, reach of the Nissan Bluebird SSSR. This, of course, is the most rally prep thing you could ever buy from a factory from the dealership, so says the people in Japan. Um, it is pretty rally. <laughs> it is a. It is basically a car that was missing its roll cage in order for you to go racing. Actually, I think it comes with a rear half of a roll cage. Uh, there is an early version and a late version. They have two different sort of livery schemes. It's not livery like a rally car, but it's got a whole bunch of like red and blue Nissan Nismo-ish uh, decal package for it. There's probably about 30 or 40 new parts to this kit to turn it into this rally prepped version uh, rather than the just boring factory street car they came out with uh, last year. Uh, reissue of the Nissan Skyline R31. This time is a GTX twin cam 24 valve. This has a couple of new decals added to it um, basically to replicate a slightly earlier version of the the uh, R31 one that had a different engine in it. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much the same as the last R31 GTS X, so there's that. Uh, reissue of the Toyota Starlet EP71. This is going to be a Turbo S early. This is a new grill and a new steering wheel added to backdate it. Uh, reissue of the Lola T9050 Formula 3000 car. This replicating the 1991 season Leighton House livery car. Uh, so the the those 124 scale Formula 3000 cars have been reissued uh, over the course of the last 18 months quite heavily. This has a brand new set of decals that have never been in that Lola kit in the past. And then lastly, the one new tool kit, which is technically at this point about 15 months late, is the Mitsubishi Lancer EX1800SR Turbo. This is the streetcar version of the kit that VMAX did as a rally car. Now, those two kits don't share any parts. They are not based on the same tooling. They are two separate companies, two separate tools, two separate countries. 
Um, but it is the streetcar version of that rally car. Uh, this will, of course, have probably begat two or three, you know, or four different versions over its lifetime. It was announced at uh, Shizuka in 2019, and then at All Japan Hobby and Model in 2019, and then it was supposed to come out back in March, and it has slowly slid its way to June. But the box art is done, <laughs> the shipping for it this month has been confirmed, so uh, that kit will finally come out, and again, that is a brand new tool from the ground up. And that, guys, is that. So, you are now informed as to what kits you shall be purchasing in the month of June. Your wallet weeps. <laughs> Maybe. It depends on how you feel about old round two kits or new Japanese kits. So, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys on the other side.